What is going my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today data download for the treasure map Sugo Fest which is what we're expecting. We knew it was coming at some point. We didn't actually know when but now we have full confirmation that the treasure map Sugo Fest is going to be debuting on November 10th at 1900 PST time. Now remember this is going to be a multi-part Sugo Fest. I don't have the other parts pulled up but just know it's going to be relatively the same uh, across all parts aside from the fact that each part will have differing boosted characters um i would expect king and queen to be featured once again on this banner don't know what parts they're going to be boosted on but just know that they should be available on this banner on some of these parts here so just look and see which ones are going to be boosted on what part and then pull on that part okay so in this video today we're going to go through the structure see if there's anything different anything crazy and we'll talk about the new characters as well with the brand new um okiku there's raizo and kawamatsu and these characters are all for treasure map kaido that's going to be debuting on the 13th of November. So that's going to be a pretty fun event. Looking forward to that one. I should be able to stream that one for you as well. But um, let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's see what we got here today. Okay, so having a look at the banner right here. First multi, discounted at 30 rainbow gems. Then we've got a legend or a rate boost on, on step two. Nothing special there. Guaranteed to get one of the new characters on the third multi. That's actually pretty good. I believe Okiku being, you know, the mainline unit of the of the banner is likely going to be the, the highest boosted unit on the event. So that's dope. Um, then we've got a, another legend or rate boost and then a guaranteed legend on the fifth multi. Okay, so a little steep to get those uh, guaranteed legends. Um, and then another new character on the seventh multi as well. Well, another new one on the 10th, and wow, the 15th, so five multis you gotta go to get the next new character, and it still goes up to the 20th, oh my god. Look, I don't advise doing 20 multis on a treasure map Sugo Fest, especially not this treasure map Sugo Fest. I don't think it's really overly worth it. Um, if we go over to Extra Island real quick, I wonder, is the actual treasure map event live? Yeah, yeah, so this is the event where you can just play it and you'll get your hands on those characters for the, like, the, the free Fortnite characters that will be slightly boosted for the event. But you can see on the icon of the event that Kaido is indeed the, the unit for this treasure map, which is what we're expecting. Um, I would also expect at this point that, you know, the, the Luffy character and the Robin character that they were data downloaded into the game I believe those characters are going to be like additional rewards in this treasure map. That's what I'm expecting to happen because they're here and I, I guess this is the start of the content sync between Global and Japan. So that's uh, it's interesting to say the least, right? But uh, let's go ahead and break down these new characters. Let's see what they're actually all about. Are they actually worth getting? Let's go ahead and have a look. Now remember the big thing about these characters is that not only are they treasure map units, so they're going to be boosted on the next treasure map afterwards, but they typically have really good supports these days. So we're going to go ahead and check that. But before we do, once again, Mugiwara 56 Sanji is boosted again. This character should be boosted on every part of the Sugo Fest. I'm going to guess he should be. And this is a character you can only pull on treasure map Sugo Fests. And this character also should be boosted on pretty much every treasure map moving forward as well. So if you do pull this character, if you're lucky enough to get him, it's it's going to be a nice unit to have because you know it's a guaranteed unit you can run on any team that you want um, as a captain he's a very good captain and you should be able to get you know a lot of usage and a lot of mileage out of this character for multiple treasure maps to come so that's really nice to see i've made plenty of videos about this guy if you guys haven't seen it yet go check out the youtube channel this guy's really good but let's go ahead and talk about the first character which is kawamatsu who is a quick slasher powerhouse kawamatsu's captain effect is pretty bad being a health booster not even getting an attack boost which is awful his special ability though on an 11 turn cooldown reduces paralysis and bind by four turns and if you have four more quick characters when you you use when you use the special you get a 1.75 attack boost for your decks and quick characters for one turn but then it says if there's four or more decks characters you get a color affinity boost 1.75 for your decks and quick characters okay that is interesting so okay if you got quick characters you get attack boost if you got decks characters you get color affinity weird um, because, I mean, it makes sense for, if, for, for quick, because if you run, like, king, that's the whole premise of these, of these units, using them with king and queen, um, if you use an attack boost and you got king as one of the captains, it allows you to get his, uh, effect to activate when you move on to the next turn, but oddly enough, I feel like it's kind of a missed situation, they probably should have made that an orb boost for his secondary effect, very, very odd choice, but okay, I, I, I don't really understand that, maybe you can use both king and queen and then you can get 
color affinity, attack and orbs with king and queen. There's probably some shenanigans around that. Um, Sailor effects, uh, he does do tap timing bonus damage, which is interesting, but nothing crazy. Uh, let's see what his support effect is. Attaching to any quick character, and if they use their special, not a damage dealing special, but just a special, boost quick characters attack by 1.3 for one turn. That's actually pretty good. Um, that's a really nice support. That can be used in a lot of different teams. Um, he can attach to any quick character in the game, which is awesome, and it's not restricted by the type of special that they use. It's not a damage dealing special. It's not an orb change special. So that's great. I think overall, Karl Matsu is relatively fine. I don't think he's going to see that much play outside of Treasure Map, but at least he does provide paralysis and bind removal like he does give you some utility on top of providing a boost of some kind um, but that support is probably the reason you probably want to be picking up this guy pretty good unit moving on now to the next character is Rizo, who is a dex powerhouse shooter character captain effect is at least and it's an attack boost this time shooter characters get 1.5 times attack and his special ability on a 12 turn cooldown random type damage to random enemies 12 times, changes block and empty slots and unfavorable slots into matching, and then boosts the color affinity of your decks and quick characters by 1.75. Wait, really? Unless if, yeah, no, this guy's also color affinity booster. That's weird, you know, I'm actually gonna check the database just to double check that one. Okay, I just checked the database and yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we have both Raizo and Karmatsu both being color affinity boosters. That's pretty weird. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. That's pretty strange. But I guess he's not bad. I mean, he again at the end of the day, he's a damage dealing special, which is nice. So you can have like, um, for example, like Super Type Zora can attach to him for an orb boost. That's pretty cool. But he at least he does a bit of orb change, and then his color affinity. Uh, he's not amazing. He's just fine, honestly. Sailor effects. Um, his own type slots are matching, so any type slot on him is matching. That's good. And his support effect attaching to any Dex character. Boost the color affinity of Dex characters by 1.3 at the start of the final battle. Actually, you know what? This is probably the guy I want the most so far. I definitely want him more than, than Kawamatsu because I don't have a Dex color affinity support unit. This character would definitely fix a lot of those issues that I have sometimes. It's not a not a big thing, but definitely a character I want because that, that is a very useful support to have. Just to generate color affinity to one color at the start of the final stage, really, really nice to have. So yeah, Ryzo, good support. Um, special ability is a little bit to be desired though. Pretty terrible special in my opinion anyways. Now the final character here obviously is Okiku. So Okiku is a quick slasher driven character with a... 1.5 attack boost to slashes and a special on a 12 turn cooldown reducing attack down by five defense up by five and then boost the attack of dex and quick by 1.75 for one turn that's pretty good um again 2.25 during the treasure map that's actually pretty nice i mean defense up and attack down removal is really good um yeah this is easily the best unit in terms of special ability in my opinion uh looking at this effect quick characters will treat deck slots as beneficial that's a really good crewmate ability let's have a look at the support attaching to any slasher and if they use a special boost the supported characters attack and slot effects by 1.2 for one turn uh, honestly, not amazing. Uh, that's it's like a pseudo Cavendish, Legend Cavendish uh, support, and like Cavendish's support isn't used all that often. I don't like it that much, actually. I definitely think that Raizo and, and Kawamatsu are a little bit more usable with their supports, but at least Okiku has a pretty good special with great utility and still providing an attack boost to your crew. So overall, yeah, th these characters aren't like really wowing me. It's nothing amazing. I definitely think the next batch of characters, which um, I think after this point on Japan, it was like the summer batch. Um, that batch had really, really crazy treasure map rare recruits. So I'm really looking forward to that batch whenever that one does come out. But at the moment, these ones aren't super amazing. So, like, honestly, if you are free to play, you probably want to be skipping most treasure maps anyway in terms of the, the, the Sugo Fest. Don't skip the event, obviously. But skipping these treasure map Sugo Fest is probably what you want to do, especially because at this point, we've already got Yamato out. Everyone's excited about that. Um, but, you know, New Year's is not far away. And I think most people at this point should be saving for New Year's because that is when the next big character is going to be coming out. 
that and it is not far away so you don't have too many opportunities to save up a lot of rainbow gems so definitely conserve your rainbow gems for, for new years that's what i would be suggesting but with all that being said guys that is going to conclude this video today talking about the treasure map sugo fest i really hope you guys have enjoyed the video today and if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to go ahead and hit the like button and if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video